Hello and welcome back. A little while ago, I made a video about Harvest Moon and its creator, Yasuhiro Wada. Ever since then, I've wanted to make more videos about game developers, their inspirations, and their personal stories. So I figured, here we go with some more. But this time, I'm going to be focusing on one of my personal heroes, Satoshi Tajiri. He's most famous for being the mastermind behind Pokemon. And for sake of time, I'm going to be splitting this video up into two parts. The first part, basically his background story and everything leading up to Pokemon, and the second part being Pokemon and everything else. I find his story so inspirational that I've even done a few projects on him when I was in high school. So where does a visionary like this start? In Mashita, Tokyo, Satoshi was born on August 28th, 1965. He lived close to a forest and would spend most of his days in the forest collecting bugs. He was so obsessed with the hobby that he was dubbed Mr. Bug by other kids. He would even trade bugs with friends so that he could get the ones he really wanted. Sound familiar? But as he grew older and his hometown became more and more developed, the places that he used to love to collect bugs became things like roadways and shopping centers. He needed a new hobby, and he found refuge in the arcade scene that was growing ever so popular in Japan. And similar to bugs, Satoshi was obsessed. Fun fact, from everything I've been able to find on the internet, it looks like Space Invaders was his favorite game. This obsessive nature that Satoshi Tajiri has is most likely due to his Asperger's Syndrome. That's right, he has Asperger's, which is a form of autism that lands on the high-functioning spectrum of autism. And one of the signs of Asperger's is the obsession over a specific and sometimes unusual topic. But it was his obsession that led him to meeting somebody who would be completely integral to the making of Pokemon. Satoshi started his own series of fan-made magazines that he would handwrite and staple together. And guess what the series was called? Game Freak. Now, I actually tried to see if I could buy any of these original copies of Game Freak magazine, but I assume it's impossible, as they've probably most likely been lost to time. However, I did find scans of the magazines. And as Game Freak magazines grew in popularity, it caught the eye of Ken Sugimori, who joined the team as an illustrator. For anyone who doesn't know, Ken Sugimori has made the design of just about every single Pokemon there is, and this new friendship paved the way for everything to come. While Ken and Satoshi were sitting around talking about the inadequacy of games coming out around that time, they decided to make their own games. In the late 80s, Game Freak switched from a magazine company to a game developing company. So now let's talk about the actual games. I actually have a few of them. Their first game ever being Mendel Palace. Mendel Palace is a game that you flip around tiles in order to kill evil dolls. The whole goal of the game is to save your girlfriend from your evil brother or something like that. I'm not very good, so I never really got that far. In all honesty, it's really nothing that special, and the only reason I got a complete in box is because it was insanely cheap. The next early game that I have by Game Freak is Smart Ball on the Super Nintendo. Smart Ball is a pretty straightforward side-scrolling platformer where you defeat monkeys and throw balls at them and ride birds that look like Spiro. It's not the greatest game, but it's worth the cheap asking price. However, their most praised game before making Pokemon was 1994's Pulse Man. This was a side-scrolling platformer on the Sega Genesis, or Mega Drive, because it was never released in America, except for on the Sega Channel. This was a streaming-based service where you could play a new game on your Sega Genesis every month through the internet. It's pretty weird to think that something like that exists on such an old console. However, the game was released recently on the Wii Virtual Console worldwide. I have been meaning to get a copy of this game, so if I ever import one, I'll let you guys know. But here's a list of all of the games that Game Freak made before Pokemon. 1989, Mendel Palace. 1991, Smart Ball, also 1991, Yoshi. 1992, Magical... Excuse me. Tururuto-kun. 1993, Mario and Wario. 1994, Nanten to... Ishso, er, Ishso Kuru Kuru Puzzle, 1994 Pulse Man, and 1994 Smart Ball 2. And in 1996, they released a game that would not only change Game Freak, but the entire gaming industry as a whole. Something that would go on to become the second best selling game franchise of all time. And of course, I can't be talking about any other games than Pokemon Red and Green versions. Mm -hmm. 